Hi, my name is Matt Pascara. Um, I'm an RTF student at the University of Texas at Austin. So, Olivia Kate Stelic. Hi, my name is Sierra Davis, and I was a Marine Corps veteran. I was in the United States Marine Corps Infantry. I'm a captain in the United States Army. I was going to do ROTC. And I'm trans. As of right now, we're estimating that there's about 134,000 trans veterans, not including um, people that are currently serving. I wanted to do what my dad had done. Um, he went to West Point, so I wanted to go to West Point and just kind of continue to do that. So I was an infantry officer for about five and a half years, and then I found out about the physical therapy program. And I was like, oh, I could do that. That seems fun. Yes, people were a little surprised when um, I told them I was going to do ROTC, mostly because I, I, I sort of internalized my interest in the military in high school. And so when I finally realized I'm going to apply for an ROTC scholarship, people were sort of like, do you really want to do this? Like, oh, I didn't know you were still considering this. And I was like, yeah. This is something I want to do. I mean, it, I didn't forget about it. I didn't, you know, brush it off. It's, it's, it's always been there. I enlisted when I was 17. A lot of things made me want to join the military, but, you know, there's the obvious. I wanted to serve my country. There's also, I wanted to get away from my parents. Well, I was raised apostolic, Pentecostal, very conservative Christian, um, grew up believing that I was an abomination, and so, being the hardest of the hard and the most masculine that I could think of was my way of running away. Danny, Santa Claus, hello, hello! I remember I asked Santa Claus, I either want to be one, an elf, or two, a boy. And so junior year was when I really came out and I said, I'm trans and this is what I'm gonna do and this is who I am. And senior year, I started hormone replacement therapy. Before joining the military, I was very sheltered and had no idea that trans people even existed. I started my transition, uh, I want to say about six months after I got out. I, I never actually thought that I would go through with it. It was something that I've, I've known that I was a girl since I was like six. Um, I actually went to an off-post psychiatrist and he was like, I think you might be transgender. And I was like, well, tell me what that means. And he explained it and I was like, yep, definitely I'm that. But at that point in time, there was, there was nothing I could do about it. It was a medically disqualifying condition. And I left the army, I didn't want to get out. I, I loved leading soldiers and kind of assuming that really I was just gonna have to wait until I retired to transition. Um, and then in 2016, uh, they changed the policy, kind of, to me, out of nowhere. I'm announcing today that we're ending the ban on transgender Americans in the United States military. Effective immediately, transgender Americans may serve openly, and they can no longer be discharged or otherwise separated from the military just for being transgender. I just bawled my eyes out that day. Like, it was this, like, you just never really thought it was going to happen. People started coming out really that day, I think. It definitely helped me as somebody who is trying to understand their identity sort of feel a sense of relief in that I want to go into the military. It won't be as bad as I think it you know, would be if, you know, prior to this reversal. Everybody's been very, very supportive of, of my community. However, even when I came out to my boss, he said, you know, things are a little bit still topsy-turvy in the world. I'm not trying to tell you not to do this. I just want you to think through all of the potential, um, you know, things that could come uh, given the climate in our country. And as it turns out, he was not wrong. The president tweeted about transgender people are not going to be allowed in the military anymore, and, and that's really where we've, where we've come now three years later, is, is that we're back to having banned trans people. Initially, I thought it was idiotic. The first instinct was, okay, you never served. There are these people here who want to serve, who are fighting and have fought and have sacrificed and you're telling us that we're not 
worthy. I was at work and my one of my patients came in and was like, I don't care what anybody says, I want you to be my physical therapist. And I was like, okay. And then my sister texted and was like, are you okay? And I'm like, what's going on? Uh, once again, this was a decision uh, based on uh, what was best for the military and, a, and military cohesion and on the council of his national security team. Soldiers who were trying to transition didn't know how to go through the process because things were changing so fast. Commanders didn't know how to help their soldiers. Medical providers weren't sure what to do. I cautiously rolled my eyes. <laughs> Whenever it takes effect, I, I won't be bothered or phased by it because I got the scholarship under the grandfather clause. Um, and so it really didn't affect me until around the Supreme Court heard um, the case and green, green lit it to allow to be implemented. I looked at what was going on and I said, what's, what's the reality that these waivers are gonna be written before the end of my sophomore year when I'm supposed to contract? And mine hadn't even been written yet. So there was no timeline to know when it would be written, when I would get qualified for them, when it would be sent off, and when I would get an answer. Um, and so that's when I just said, okay, I can't, I can't bank on this any, anymore, and I, I backed out and I, I pulled out. The new ban theoretically allows for waivers to be processed, um, but to date, to our knowledge, um, there is nobody that has been approved for a waiver to transition while on active duty. Three, four, three, four, one, two, hey. The way the new policy reads is that if you are a transgender American and you have had any hormone replacement therapy or any gender confirming transition related surgeries, you cannot join the armed forces. If you're in the military and you want to come out, you can come out, you can say that you're trans, you can go see a mental health provider, but you can't transition. You can't take hormones, you can't have surgery, you still have to abide by the regulations that apply to your birth sex. And then if you're one of the few folks like me that came out between July 1st of 2016 and April 12th of 2019, then you're grandfathered in and, and you can continue with all of your necessary medical treatment. The hardest conversations I've had in the last six months have been with those kids who were like, I didn't come out before April 12th, what can I do? And I'm like, nothing. Four out of five service chiefs, one was not present for these hearings. Four out, of, four out of the five military service chiefs all testified that having transgender people in the military does not affect military readiness or unit cohesion. I mean, last year the Army missed their enlistment goal. And now with this policy, I mean, think of how many people they're gonna have to bar. Trans people have actually been shown to serve at twice the rate of non-trans people. So if trans people serve at twice the rate of your cisgender folks, and we're struggling to meet recruiting goals, why would we limit the pool of people that, that could serve the military? I'm able to pass the PT test, the male PT test, and I was not born male. I have to take a hormone every week. I'm still able to do it though. And there are so many others who are transgender and able to, you know, meet all of the qualifications. As a trans person, I take one shot a week and I take two pills in the morning. That's it. And it doesn't affect the overall unit readiness for one person to need to do something. I volunteered to go to Afghanistan with a unit that would not have had a physical therapist had I not volunteered to go. And I took care of almost 2,000 soldiers while I was there. And so clearly to me, I enhanced the military's readiness. Like there's no question about that. You've always got the old salty sergeant who's just like, the, these people shouldn't be doing this. They're, they're too weak to join the military, but for the most part, people are like, no, you're, you're, you're part of this. You are family, no matter what gender you are. I don't care. It doesn't matter to, to us at all. I remember at one point senior year thinking, after the tweets had come out, 
do I want to postpone starting transition? I knew that it was a risk and it was a risk I was willing to take. Um, it backfired in the end. <laughs> um, but I'm, I'm, I'm still glad I came out regardless. Yes, it didn't help what I wanted to do in terms of career-wise, but it, all, it, it helped my friends and family sort of come together and understand how queer people are just like everybody else and um, help, help me be able to contribute to that national conversation. We all do better when we bring our whole selves to work, to our family, to our lives, right? Like, I'm a much better physical therapist now than I was before transition. I'm a better officer. I'm a better human being uh, because I don't have to spend 50 or 60 or 70 percent of my energy just trying to make sure nobody knows that I'm trans. I, I know for sure that this will be reversed. Whether it's, you know, sooner rather than later, it will happen. As you look at history, that's the course of things, right? We continue to get more open. We continue to get more integrated. We continue to bring people in, and I think we will get back there. Um, how long is that going to take? That's really hard to tell. I, I, don't, I don't need to be special. I don't need to be treated any differently. I don't want any kind of special standards. I just want to be allowed to be my actual self, right? I just, just want to be treated like a woman in the military. I have served. I know people who have served. I know people who are serving, who are all trans. Um, people who have sacrificed so much. We fight for your rights too.